Now, there is a great confusion over what is a normal cholesterol level, and I think perhaps the confusion is because cholesterol levels in our country are taken as an average. If we take a population 20 to 30 years old, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, and we take a population that doesn't have symptoms yet. They can be dying the next day of a heart attack, but today they still seem to be okay. We take this population, we take their various values, cholesterol level, triglycerides, glucose, and so on, and these are the normal range. All these people comprise a normal range. And in our country, the so-called normal range of cholesterol, as I mentioned, is 160 to 330, because that's what the average person has. But remember, the average person in our country is very sick of heart disease, but the symptoms haven't come yet. After all, when you have a nation where 52% of all the deaths are from heart disease, you know we're a very sick country. It's an epidemic. So certainly you wouldn't want these countries' levels as a normal level. You'd want to go to countries where heart disease is unknown. And when you have heart disease where it's unknown and go to those countries, you'll find that cholesterol levels do not exceed 160 milligrams per cent. And that should be our aim, to bring our cholesterol levels down below 160 if we want to avoid heart disease. Practically no exceptions have ever been found in countries under 160 that have any heart disease at all. There has been one exception, and that's the Maasai in Africa, who have cholesterol levels of 135, and yet they eat the same amount of cholesterol and fat as we do in our country. But Dr. George Mann of Vanderbilt University found out the reason for that. They eat a lot and drink a lot of milk products. It's soured milk, and it turns out that milk has a cholesterol-lowering effect. It depresses the cholesterol out of the blood, but obviously goes right into the arteries because in Dr. Mann's mass eyes that he examined, they have such massive plaques in their arteries that uh, it's far worse than American arteries. They, their plaque starts 15 years earlier than American arteries. So it's no great advantage for them to have a cholesterol 135 and depress it artificially. But if you're on a diet where you don't have artificial depressants like the high amount of milk or polyunsaturated fats, then you can pretty much depend on your cholesterol level being a true indicator of the state of your arteries. Various authorities have told us that if you reduce cholesterol level, even though you have a high cholesterol level, down below 150, you have a good chance for even having your artery closure reverse. And that's something we're going to talk about. Because first, I'd like to then talk to you about artery walls. What does an artery wall look like? Well, if you can picture a tire, because an artery wall has three principal layers. There's an inside layer called an intima, and then there's a middle layer called the media, and the media is made up of primarily muscle cells. That's the muscle layer. That's the uh, layer that squeezes the artery so that it can divert blood from one place to another so you can decide where you want the major part of your blood. After you want to eat your dinner, you like a lot of blood to your stomach to digest the food. And when you want to run, you want it to your legs. And so the arteries do that with the muscle layer. The outside layer of the artery is called the adventitia. It's the protective layer that keeps it all together. Now the adventitia has its own circulatory system that feeds all its little cells. <clears throat> But the media layer and the intima layer have no circulatory system. They have to depend upon the, uh, the oxygen and their food coming through the inside layer of the artery in order to be able to uh, get all the oxygen and the food they need. Now, the way that works is that the inside layer of the artery, called the intima, has a single cell lining called an endothelial layer. And this single cell lining acts like a filter to let all these food products and oxygen filter through into the two inside layers. And all the blood flows through the endothelial layer. Endothelial means inside skin, it's the inside skin of the artery. Now the problem with that is that as long as you have enough oxygen in the blood, you have no problems. But what if your blood is low in oxygen because you're a smoker and you're breathing carbon monoxide and the carbon monoxide paralyzes your red blood cells so the red blood cells can't pick up oxygen, so you'd have a low oxygen level there. What if you have a low oxygen level because you're on a normal American high-fat diet? The high-fat diet gets into the bloodstream and the fat acts like an adhesive, covers all the little cells with fat, and they start to stick together. 
When they stick together, they form clumps of cells, and the clumps of cells can act through the blood vessels. And when a cell is clumped together, it can't pick up oxygen. So for these reasons, you could have a low oxygen level. And when that happens, and the blood level drops too low in oxygen, gets too much fat in the blood, there is not enough oxygen to get right up to the last little cells in the media that require it. So the media cries out some way we don't understand and tells the endothelial layer, that inside skin of the artery, to let more stuff come in. Say, so we're suffocating back here. Let more stuff come in. So what happens at the inside skin, the endothelial layer, becomes porous. It changes its permeability. It sort of develops pores. It opens up its spaces so more stuff can come in. And once it does this, that's a mistake because now certain particles traveling in the bloodstream made of fat and cholesterol can get through the endothelial layer inside the artery wall. In nature, this never happened before because never did it happen that man ever had low oxygen levels in his blood due to smoking and high fat diets. Uh, but now in modern times, that's one of the problems. And when this happens, these fat and cholesterol particles that are so high in the blood because we eat so much cholesterol, get inside the artery wall. And when they get inside, it's just like salt on an open wound. There's so much turmoil and so much confusion inside the artery wall when these cholesterol particles get inside that the media cells travel and they start to eat these intruders. Now, normally the media cells don't eat anything at all. They're just muscle cells. But the confusion and the problems and the turmoil that happens when these cholesterol particles called beta lipoprotein particles get inside the artery wall, the media cells go out to eat them. And to eat them, they start to bloat with them. And they eat and eat and eat until they're so swelled that they look like globs of fat. In fact, we call them foam cells because they look like fat. And one of the first signs of this problem is what we call a fatty streak. You can see it in an eight-year-old child. There's a streak when you open up their arteries, they're killed in some accident, and you open up their artery and you got about a half inch long streak, about a sixteenth of an inch high and a sixteenth of an inch wide. It looks like a fatty streak. It's not a fatty streak. It's right under the inside skin and it's filled, it's filled with fatty uh, laden media cells. Now, at this rate, if you cut down the fat in the blood, all that fat can reabsorb and disappear. All the cells are still alive. But if you permit high quantities of fat and cholesterol into the blood and permit this to, con to continue, what happens is that these media cells eat so much until they burst. Because in nature, there are no rules. They don't know what to do, and they just keep eating until they burst. And when they burst, they vomit their fat and cholesterol all over the other cells, and that starts to form a dead mass of fat, cholesterol, dead cells, and so on, right inside the artery wall. Now, more and more media cells come into the space, and as they do, the inside skin, that endothelial layer, starts to bulge. And as it bulges, it's like a little boil growing. And the greater the bulge, the less room there is for blood to flow, because as it bulges, it bulges right out into the area where blood is flowing. This bulge is called a plaque. Technically, it's called an atheroma. In Greek, the term atheroma means gruel, G-R-U-E-L, like cream of wheat. And the reason for that is that the, when you take one of these plaques and you open them up, the stuff inside looks just like cream of wheat. It looks like uh, uh, cornmeal. It's, uh, that's why we call it a gruel, because it's soft, mushy stuff. And that's what the inside of a plaque looks like. Now, it used to be they called this kind of problem arteriosclerosis. But that means hardening of the arteries. Well, that wasn't accurate. So they decided they'd better find another name for this. And that's why this term now, adapted from the Greek atheroma, meaning gruel, they call atherosclerosis, which means hardening of the arteries with a mushy deposit. It makes it consistent with the old term arteriosclerosis. But of course, it doesn't make any sense because you don't harden arteries with a mushy deposit. But yet, that's what atherosclerosis means. And the atheroma, or the plaque as we call it, is a boil, essentially, of cholesterol and cholesterol products and fat in it. Now, in some people, this boil, the cholesterol plaque, grows and gets very large. And sometimes it gets so large it covers 80 to 90 percent of the inside of that artery. That means only 10 percent of the space is left for blood to flow. Sometimes it closes up the artery completely. So it's sort of a tragedy. 
And the real tragedy is that the average 20-year-old in our country has at least a 20% closure of all his coronary arteries as an average at 20 years old. So you cannot say to a 20-year-old that you, when you get older, you'll have heart disease. What you have to say to them is that you're 20 years old and you have heart disease. It just hasn't broken out in the symptoms yet. A lot of 20-year-olds have at least one of the three coronary arteries 100% closed already. You read every day in the papers about a 15-year-old boy dropping dead on a basketball court from a heart attack. 25-year-olds are getting very common. 35-year-olds, that's almost an epidemic, having them die of heart attacks. So artery disease is something that happens from the time you're in your teens and continues through your life, which is shorter than it should be because the artery disease kills you.